All right, so before we actually get started inside of um, Lightbox here, I just want to quickly go over the interface just so you know where things are. Um, at the very top here, you see, you know, file, just open, save, export, nothing new there. Edit, undo, redo. There's really not too much you need to know there. Um, create, we don't generally create things inside of Mudbox. Usually what you do is you'll make a model and you bring it inside of Mudbox to uh, sculpt and to texture. Um, mesh, so um, I use the hotkey shift D to um, add new subdivision level, but you can also move subdivision levels, go up and down. You can retopologize the mesh. Um, you can tessellate the mesh, which just means it's going to turn into triangles. The retopology, the retopology is, um, generally speaking, it's always better to do it kind of it, um, manually because that way it's, um, uh, you, you know, you have more uh, say as to how it actually gets um, retopologized. Uh, but there are some programs that will auto retopologize. Mudbox in particular is not very good at it, so I don't suggest using this uh, most of the time. Um, display. Uh, I showed you earlier how to turn mesh errors off. I'm going to actually turn off the grid, but I already did that. Um, you can deal with UVs. We're not going to use UVs. We're not going to render anything, and we don't really need that. Okay. There is 3D view, UV view, and image browser. Don't click any of those. I actually clicked this earlier, and it just made a crash. So leave that alone. Uh, alone. Um, uh, on the bottom here are our tools. I'm just going to pull this up a little bit so you can see here. Okay. So you can see there are sculpt tools, paint tools, which deal with like texturing. There's these curve tools, which you can use as basically guides to help guide your sculpting or painting. There's pose tools where basically you can draw almost like a skeleton on the inside and then bend and twist things. Um, it's not super useful. It's just for like posing if you want to like pose your stuff. And there's these selection move. Again, we don't use these too often. For the most part, especially right now, everything we're going to be doing, we're just going to be using the sculpt tools. So you don't need to worry about any of these other ones. These will be more pertinent when we actually go to do the final sculpting and the final texturing. Same thing over here, you can see they have these different stamps. Um, so we can use these in order to like put textural, like sculpting or text uh, or texturing on there. Uh, there's also stencils where it's like an image that you brush on top of. Again, we're not gonna really need these. You might wanna use fall off. That's just the brush, like how it's feathered off. You could potentially use that. We're not gonna play around with any of these material presets. These are just change the material that's currently on there. The default's fine. You'll notice that out of all of these, the default is the ugliest. Whenever you're sculpting, it's always best to sculpt in normally the ugliest one. Which sounds counterintuitive, but the reason being is if you can make it look good with a bad material, when you put the appropriate good material, uh, it will look even better. Okay, um, and so like you might have a material like this cool shiny metal looking one, right? It'll look neat, but the problem is you won't be able to see the surface characteristics well. So typically, we want something with a sort of soft specular, such as the de the default material has. Also, don't click on the lighting. Once you click on one of these lighting presets, you actually can't get back to the original one. These are adjustable and changeable, but I just don't play around with them. You can also have bookmarks where, like, you can have um, different, uh, like, I want this view bookmark, and then you can click on it, and it's almost just like, uh, you can just have, like, preset positions of the camera, so that way if you want to look at different views, and you can have that. But I really wouldn't deal with any of these. Just leave this on fall off. That's the most you're going to want to do. Now, over here, you'll see there are basically two areas, okay? There's the sculpt area and the paint area. So they, uh, this works a lot like Photoshop where you create layers and then you can paint on those layers. Um, sculpt, you can also do layers. You can sculpt on different layers. We're not gonna do any of the layering or anything. Um, and we're definitely not doing any painting this time. We're just gonna be doing the sculpting. And we're not gonna use layers because we're just sculpting directly on the model. And we're not trying to do, we're not trying to micromanage or get into textural or very like nuanced things. We're just gonna do overall generally broad sculpting stuff so that we can retopologize the model over top of what we have. So we're not going to need any of that. Uh, but that's what you will see here. There's also object list, which shows all the objects you can see. There's just the cameras, the material, and the model. There's not much there. Um, we're not going to use any of these uh, uh, viewport filters. They just have things like you could add ambient occlusion. So I don't even know. Let me hit, I think it's a W. Let's see. We even see it. So it just adds that sort of like ambient occlusion shading. There's like depth of field. Right, they're kind of pointless to be honest, so just don't even bother with those. Um, down here are the tool settings. So, whatever you're currently using, um, you'll see the settings for that tool right here. So, this is what you're going to mostly be using, and these are mostly what you're going to be using. You can actually very quickly choose these by doing one. Oh, why you not? Why you no work? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So, that these all line up, and you can also move these around. So, for some reason, like I really like where are you? Bulge is actually a really good one. So I could take bulge 
and I'm going to middle click and drag this over next to um, grab because I use bulge quite a bit. Um, uh, let me see, reduce, remesh. I don't think we need to do any of those. Yeah, I think most of the other ones I'm probably okay with. You're mostly only going to use these couple here, to be honest with you. Uh, we actually don't need most of these other ones. They're nice and they're fun, but they're not super crucial. Um, okay, so I think we got all that. We have this over here. Okay, so now what we're going to do is actually start working in this. All right, um, the navigation should be the same. It's just my because that's what we chose. So all left, middle, right. Okay, you should be somewhat familiar with that. Um, nothing new there. So if I hit W, I can see the wireframe. Um, you can also do it by going to display, but just W wireframe, just think of it like that. Um, I think I already subdivided it. I did, okay, this one doesn't have it because it crashed. So to subdivide the model, you hit Shift D, and that will do a subdivision. And then if you hit page down or page up, it goes up and down the levels. And you can actually see them in the upper right here. So see if I go down, uh, page down, come on. Page down, page up. And if I hit Shift D, it will add another level, right? So now I'm up to level two. It tells me how many polys. And I can hit page down to level one to level zero, okay? And there's reasons to go up and down like that. So let's just, for now, we'll just go on the second level. It's probably good enough. Um, and what you generally want to do is just do overall kind of adjustments. Our character is obviously symmetrical. Um, you might be doing a character that's asymmetrical. If you can make a character symmetrical, it'll be easier because it's just, it's literally half as much work. So while I have the tools, I'm just going to go ahead and choose regular sculpt here. I'm going to go over to this mirror and just make sure it's on X. If for some reason your X is not lining up, um, you probably want to go back to the drawing board and make sure your character is on origin and that it's all correct, right? There's also local X that might fix the problem. If for some reason you're slightly offset, um, but just be aware that that exists there. Let me pull this up so you can see more of the tools here. Um, for the most part, these are probably all fine. Um, actually, what I like to usually start with is grab. So the way that grab works, they just click and you can pull it. So I will try to make some general adjustments. Um, another good thing to do while you're working is to have your reference photos. So I have some reference photos of Logan right here, and I'm just going to keep them on my other monitor. Um, so I would suggest doing something like that. So that way you can kind of use that as a guide to as you're sort of working. Okay. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to use this grab. Come on. There we go. And I'm just going to zoom in here. And I'm going to try and make really big, broad adjustments and then kind of go from there. So I'm just going to kind of pull this and I'm looking and oops, and we're going to go back around here and I'm just going to kind of pull this up because he's got more of a trapezius than what you currently see. That should probably be a little bit bigger, right? Um, I might make him a little bit more bulky even than what's seen there, but you can see right here, right? So I'm going to hold B. So to, to change the brush size, you can obviously do it over here, but it's the same as Maya. So B is brush size and M is strength. Now with the grab, just make it 100% because I don't want it to like not move when I pull it. So I'm just going to pull this a little bit that way, pull that a little bit that way. Just make these shoulders a little bit more bulky. Just kind of click in and kind of see what I'm doing, right? So we'll just kind of bulk this up a little bit. I have to make this a little bit smaller so that it just, right? Okay, that looks okay. This looks like this should be pulled up a little bit. It looks kind of chunky or something. So we're gonna work on that as well. Um, so he definitely needs more in the pack region. Um, let's go ahead. So I might do a little bit of that. And then the other thing you might wanna use is the sculpt here. Okay, so the sculpt uh, just works like you would expect it, right? When I sculpt, it does that. Um, again, B and M. So I'm gonna take M and I'm just gonna make it weaker, okay? And then the other thing is too, is if when you hold control, it goes inwards as opposed to outwards. And when we hold shift, it's smooth, okay? So I'm just gonna kind of draw in where I think his pecs should generally be, All right? So I'll hold shift to smooth it a little bit and then just a little bit more, I'm just kind of drawing in here. And I just like to use a kind of a weak one to start with, okay? And kind of uh, rip cage there, okay? So, and then we'll just pull this out. All right, that looks fine. This is a little bit like group. He's got like a big torso and then little legs. Um, you definitely need some buttocks here. So, so a little bit bigger, make a little, oops. We don't want to do that yet. It's tessellation, okay, good. Okay, good. Um, and um, so we're gonna kind of just 
and then it's going to hold shift. Generally speaking, what you want to do is draw stroke, um, push shift to um, push shift to uh, smooth out the stroke because usually it's going to be not quite what you what you want. Okay, so so just kind of draw and stroke, shift to smooth, draw a stroke, shift to smooth. Come on, there it goes, and then you know more of a leg here. Definitely, right now he looks like he kind of. Oops, it's a little much on the Botox. Definitely look like you kind of skipped leg day, right? Don't want to do that. So I'm just going to do that and then smooth for a little bit there. Now, particularly in some areas, like when you're trying to do, like, uh, like for instance, this muscle here, right? If I go like that, you can see it's going to pull it forward, which is fine, but it doesn't really look like a muscle. This is where it bulges better. Oh, actually, a good example is right here. Let me show you. Like these fingers are too thin. If I like this, you're going to see, see how it kind of just pulls the fingers this way? Thickens them up a little bit, but if I use bulge, we'll use the muscle as an example first. Not only does it kind of pull it out, it actually kind of expands as well. And so you'll actually get a better result, particularly for muscles. All right. So we'll smooth that down a little bit more. Um, and it's particularly handy when you're doing the hands. Because you'll see, see how it kind of expands it out and it's not just moving it out. So now I can kind of give these a little bit more oomph so that they don't go away on me. So I'm just do B and I'm just doing real light. Now, if you have a tablet or something, that's definitely a lot better to use um, because you have like pressure sensitivity, and, um, you know, it's obviously easier to draw with. So, so I'm just kind of trying to thicken this up, generally speaking. Another tool that can be kind of useful when it gets kind of crunchy is this relax. So what that will do is it'll kind of relax out the geometry of touch. Um, I think we did use it a little bit, and I'm just going to shift it smooth a little bit. So, and definitely need some more up there. So I'll just do the regular sculpt and just try to get this to be out a little bit more. Just trying to get this and just smooth. And just doing a stroke and then kind of smoothing it out. Okay, as you can see, it's getting a little bit, a little bit jagged. And I don't want it to be jagged. All right, uh, let's just do that. It's a little much. Okay. Oops. There we go. I'm just gonna smooth this down so they're back to being separated. Now you might notice that sometimes it doesn't like what you're doing. You don't see. Come on. You might have to just move the camera a little bit and then you'll see what you did again. So I'm just going to hold smooth and try to smooth these back um, so that they are not. Right now it looks a little bit like this hand got, like, you know, like it got swollen or something. He, he done uh, messed his hands up. So, okay, so we're just kind of trying to get those back a little bit. So that looks acceptable for now. Um, Okay, so, um, all right, so let's go back to bulge a little bit more. Like so, I'm trying to do this relatively quickly so that you don't get bored. Um, but hopefully, you get the idea. Now, see, needs a little bit more of a crotch area. So, let's just pull that out, and then I'm just going to smooth that out, pull that out, smooth that out, just to try and get that to be. A little bit better. Maybe try a little relax and see if I can get that to kind of be a little bit better. All right. And then I, he needs more calves. So again, I'm just going to use that bulge, make it a little bit bigger. And we'll just kind of bulge these out, but then smooth afterwards, right? So most of the time you want to do is just bulge and smooth. Bulge and then, or um, stroke and then smooth. Not necessarily bulge, but okay. Um, I'm not looking for this to be particularly super accurate or anything like that. We're just trying to get it so that it looks a little bit better, right? But notice that I'm just constantly rotating it around, trying to get something that looks more accurate. Okay, so he needs a little bit more fastest medialis. So I um, highly suggest learning anatomy. That's a super handy thing. If this is what you think you want to do, is this sort of... Um, character sculpting or, you know, character modeling, um, that's going to be more helpful to you than even this class. I would, I would highly suggest taking like a, uh, uh, 
like anatomy drawing class if you can. That's super handy. Right. So looks, looks okay, I guess. It needs more more stuff on this side. All right. Um, okay, so you can see I got him a little bit closer. Um, definitely needs a little bit more in the face. So I'm just going to try and make this a little bit better. I'm going to need regular sculpts. Okay. A little bit more here, smooth that out. All right, and then let's see. Just gonna try and it's got a bit of a butt hit there. Okay, just uh, like that. Okay, like that. Just try to smooth whenever you do something. Just smooth it out afterwards. All right, so all right, so we'll call that okay for a first pass. Um, not great, but it's getting a little bit closer. All right, so I'm gonna call that good on this pass. But then what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go a little bit farther with this. Um, so what I would just suggest, and then uh, it's basically do what I did now is I'm just trying to generally do the silhouette. But you see, it's still missing some parts. Like its face, uh, there's nothing in its face, right? And if you were to look, you can see I can't actually sculpt a face out of this. There's not enough geometry. Right, even if I went much smaller and uh, let's see, let's do regular. Um, I can't really get a nose on there, and I could just keep subdividing it until I have enough, but it's still not going to be quite good enough because the topology is not there to support it, right? Because it's flat. So we're going to use um, we're going to do some like dynamic tessellation. Okay, um, I'm gonna do that in the next video. Uh, so for now, um, just try to get it. I'm not doing like a super great job. It doesn't have to be too crazy. Um, just try to get it roughly. It'll be easier to sculpt in this mode than when we do the dynamic tessellation. So just try to get it roughly in the right area, and then um, then you can go on to the next one. So just do kind of a rough sculpt similar to this, okay?